Hey YouTube, Alan back with another Package and Pickups video and this one is kind of going to be a conglomeration of several things that have been, you know, just, just been coming in in the last little while. I decided to kind of wait and do them all together because they're all from YouTubers. Um, so you could call this a YouTuber special, I guess. Uh, just a few little bits here and there, just nice little bits that, that you know, kind of add to a whole lot of collections, I guess. Um, I guess we'll go from... Bum, 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 bum. Well, we'll go to the handies, I guess. I was going to see if I'll do it in order, but just the handies will come up first. Um, and the first item on my hand is this, and it is a, a Game Shark. I think it's 2.0, according to the back version 2. On the back, if that comes out, I don't know. So this is a cheat cartridge for the N64, and um, kind of like an action replay or whatever. Now, I'm not 100% sure does this work on European N64s. Certainly, I know that the, um, the cartridge tabs are, are American. Well, actually, they could be universal because they're completely empty. So I'll give it a lash, but I have a funny feeling this is for an NTSC one. Um, and wait, before I get into this, I never said who who sent me this. That was bad of me. But anyway, this is from a guy called Focus RS on the Game Gavel forums, and he's a YouTube channel called um, I think it's SVT uh, five hundred twelve. I'll put a link in the description below. When you give names of numbers and stuff like that, I know from experience from my own channel, people tend to get it wrong. So I'll, I'll put a name in the description below. Um, but he's Focus RS on Game Gavel, and he was running a competition. Uh, it, it was just a, it was a horse racing type of game, and he said, uh, you know, pick a number, and if your number wins or it's the highest place entry, you know, you get this. So I picked a number. I didn't win. I came second, but a computer opponent came first. So I was the you know the winning human opponent, shall we say? So he very kindly sent us out, didn't charge postage or anything. Um, so, but anyway, as I said, I think this is NTSC. And I've been debating about what direction I want my uh, N64 collection to go. Do I want to just keep going PAL because I have so many PAL games? Or would it be better to get an NTSC system and that way it's probably easier to do an RGB mod? Hmm, not sure. And of course, with a Game Shark, if this is NTSC, I've a few, I've picked up a few NTS NTSC games as well. Kind of makes me inclined to to look for an NTSC machine as well. I don't know yet, but either way, it's kind of it was a nice prize to win, and it's something that I've always wanted because you can do some fairly cool stuff uh, with some games, particularly Ocarina of Time and Goldeneye. So at some point, I want to try this out. That's for damn sure. So we'll pop this over here. What's next? Um, next up then is okay. I guess we'll go with Stuart, and by Stuart I mean 2TUK, because just like my last Q&A, there's going to be stuff from two Stuarts, um, but this first one, is there's actually two packages from 2TUK, the first one came with, um, was basically a manual, I haven't fully opened it, it's it's still in its nice protective sheet, um, he, everyone who knows 2TUK will, will know that he sends stuff like practically encased in titanium, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's just you never have to worry at all about what you're what you're gonna get. But uh, rather amusingly, he also had this little note, and he said, "Alan, sorry for the lameish apologies, Stuart, due to UK in brackets." And the reason for that is because um, he said he, he basically had that spare and was going to send it over back in August, I think it was. After we kind of did a trade on a couple of manuals, he happened to have another one that I didn't have. I don't have one for him yet, but I'll keep my eye out. Um, so, I basically said to him after a while, uh, once I got back from Las Vegas, saying, um, did you actually send that out because I received nothing in the post? And I wasn't trying to say, look, hey, where is it? It was more a case of, I have post go missing on me. So, he said, oh, no, no, I completely forgot about that. Eventually, you know, he said, I'll get it done, you know, the next little while, so hence the note. But after that, um, I seen one of his packages uh, videos, I think it was his hour-long was it his hour long epic about the car boots and whatnot? And in it, he had. He picked up a couple of Game Boy SPs at the car boots, and one of them was this one. Um, and he said it was up for trade. And as it turns out, I've been looking for a pink Game Boy SP for my wife for the last little while. Uh, but I didn't want to pay too much because you. You know, it's, it's it was just something that she wanted to kind of throw into a bag to have the odd time. Not for a collection, literally just for playing. So condition wasn't all that important as long as it had a decent screen, you know, and worked. 
and that's exactly what this pink decent screen work in TC UK you know perfect person to send over something because he picked it up in the car boots he did a great deal on it it was a tenner and he included um, his compilation game 32 in 1 uh, it's obviously a bootleg although I was surprised to see that they actually use Game Boy Advance and Nintendo branding normally pirate cartridges tend to steer away from that because there's nearly it's, you get into more trouble from um, utilizing the trademark names than copying the games now as for I love how they you know go on about having they say Mario Tennis, Dr. Mario and these other things uh, it looks like Ultraman as well when they say Mario Tennis they mean the very original Game Boy Tetris or Game Boy Tennis uh, and they continue to have Mario Alleyway, which is of course Alleyway. I mean Mario is in it because he jumps into the paddle, but I don't know. But anyway, it, it was kind of, there's, they say 32 as well, there's only 8 and then it repeats. But it was, she was playing Dr. Mario, quite enjoying it actually. So it was a good piece just to kind of get started. Um, and yeah, it was in pretty ni nice condition. You know, the, the functional components is what mattered in this case. I already had chargers and whatnot, so I just needed the, the Game Boy. And of course most people as I said, it was a tenner. Most people are looking for six fifty just for postage for these things. So yeah, can't complain at all. So it was two bits from um, Kushi UK, Stuart number one there. Put this over to this side. Um, then we have Stuart number two. Now you've probably already seen it, uh, Ninja Bear Hug. He had sent over Tetris. And I did a fairly terrible run of Tetris. I got 45,000 or so. I just about Pipped out his score. Thought then, okay, I'll, get, I'll play it at the weekend and whatnot afterwards. Surely I can do better than that. Bloody hell no, this game is kicking my arse. Uh, it's, it's way, way harder than I was expecting. So I don't even know how I got 45,000. Generally, I can't get that good, have that high a score. So, yeah. But great game. Really, really love it. But in the package, he did actually send a few more goodies. And I've left them here. So I'll slide them all out. Yep, that's it. And there's a note, I believe, wrapped around. And I already see that there's going to be some pretty nice stuff. Um, but he says, Hi, mate. Uh, threw in a few bits and bats in for you. I'm not arsed about collecting stuff like that anymore. And I taught you to appreciate them. I do. Um, I'd be interested to see if you opened the, the Super Play cards. Well, yeah, that's one of the items. Hope you enjoy the game. And don't forget, you owe me a video response. Well, as Stu. I've done the video response, as I said. I, I, I played the DS game a fair bit and I thought okay I'm gonna you know okay I, maybe it might take a go or two to get used to the Game Boy version but it's Tetris it's it's not gonna be that much different match blocks to make lines clear Ooh, get Tetris for high score you know it's it's straightforward very simple and uh, put this with TT games though without the ability to hold and without the infinite spinning that you get in more modern versions by god that game takes no prisoners you really have to be on the ball and you know one mistake one you know dropping a piece where you don't intend it and before you know it you've got a load of stuff blocked you know kind of holes everywhere that you can't clear so damn hard but great game now um, the stuff that uh, he threw in is as Brucey bonuses as it were the super play cards Sonic oh I'm gonna have to really think about opening these <laughs> it's 120 uh, trading cards to collect I'm guessing so this was by Panini. Now, I remember Panini from back in the day, if that's actually how you call it, because it makes it sound like food to me. Mm. And please tell me the correct pronunciation if that's totally wrong. Because um, I did have some of their stuff, and it was Sonic stuff too. They did a sticker album. And I was going and collecting the stickers and whatnot. Never got it finished, very annoyingly. Must That's a project to do, to finish that off. I'm not gonna open this now. That's not to say I won't, and if I do, I'll do it on camera, but I'm going to have to think about it because... Yeah, I, I, can, I can never tell about this. Like he said, like Stuart said in his video, he's not arsed about collectibles, and that's understandable. If you want to play, or you want to just get the games to game, I totally understand why these type of things don't necessarily appeal. So yeah, hard to know. Now, this one actually, cards again, I think. I can, I can peek into these, because these ones are open. Um, these are, I think these are Japanese cards. So we'll have a look at them. Oh, there's the packaging. Sega. And all the rest is in Japanese. And apparently it's Selection 3. Freaks. Sega Freaks Selection 3. 
So we have some guy from the last Bronx. Virtual Factor 3 Akira. These look like fighting guys though. So. Uh, Virtual Factor 3 Cage. The Sakura Wars, Kena. Never even heard of that game, Jesus. Oh, a nice glittery card from Sakura Wars Wars again. What the hell is Sakura Wars? Please leave a comment below. <laughs> Never even heard of this game. Must have been a Japanese only, I'm thinking. Or thinking. Uh, that's obviously a Sonic big piece card that you got to collect multiple for. Last Bronx again. So obviously very fighting focused. All right, on the back of that Sonic one, you have um, you know, Tails and Sonic in the car. And generally, at the back of them, they have some information about the cards. So there we have um, Shun from Virtual Fighter again. And Sarah. So by this stage, um, what year is this? Do they have a date? No, not that I see. I was going to say they say they were probably into their, you know, it was obviously late Dreamcast, or Late Saturn, early Dreamcast. But yeah, they're pretty cool as well. I have a feeling I might open those Super Plays. Mm. They're calling to me now that I've seen these ones. <laughs> so I take it um, Stuart opened those. Ones. But there's some more cards. These are very unusual ones. Actually, I don't know what these are. There's an artist name, but I want to read the back. Oh, right. They're from... They're of US Gold at the back. So are these like... The Hulk or something? Sega Genesis and Game Gear available. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, I have a funny feeling. These might be part of the Hulk bulk pack, which, if you want to know what that is, look for one of Ninja Bear Hulk's. Um, I think it was, if you look at his top three rare items in his collection, he talks about that. Um, well, at the back there, we've US Gold, uh, so uh, which is what makes me think it's from that package, because I'm not actually, I've never actually seen them up close, so I, I don't know. And it does talk about available for Sega Genesis, Game Gear, Super Nintendo. Interestingly, no mention of Master System, so, hmm, I'm not sure. Although it does mention he's still just a spoiled pretty boy with too much free time on his hands, Dr. Banner. And he looks like Duke Nukem, if you ask me. So yeah, I'd say these are actually from the Hulk bulk, and they are bloody hard to get. So that was very good of you to send these over. Um, I take it these are you must have had these loose then, and and you have the other pack because finding the Hulk bulk took them about six years or something like. <laughs> they are very hard to find. Um, very little information known about them. You would not tell um, that they existed if it wasn't for people like him and other collectors who search out these really rare things. So yeah, it was a damn nice bonus. Very, really appreciate it. And of course, that goes along with the cards. So lots of cards. Now, one other thing about this package. Now, Stuart sent over, obviously, the sets of cards. But the main thing was Tetris. And at the time, I said to him, well, I came with a note too. So I basically came with this stuff here. And I said to him, I had basically been looking on eBay. And just to get this loose, even without the piece of plastic, just the cartridge. I was looking at postage rates of, at the very minimum, it seemed four pounds sterling. The odd person would maybe be three fifty, uh, but generally four, five. I've had quotes of just for a loose cartridge, a loose Game Boy cartridge that was pretty much going to sell for ninety nine cent. They wanted thirteen sterling shipping. Now I, I find I will not pay that for a loose cartridge when it's so low valued. It's just ridiculous. And I said to him, well, how much does it actually cost? So he he said, well, he, just for the cartridge would be 180. Now, he sent a few more bits, so I checked the envelope when it came in. It was 220 or 221, actually. What is it? It's upside me. 221 for all of the bits. And now, okay, I understand you've got to buy a bubble mail or whatever, but you buy a few packs of those or whatever. They're not that expensive. I mean, 30p or... Whatever you know, when you buy them in a pack, is is, is what you pay. So two fifty is ample to ship this. Really, it would take even less. In fact, two UK sent this over, and it costs less. And that's a whole Game Boy and the game, and it was well packaged, really well packaged too. 
and that costs less than most sellers are looking for just a loose cartridge. So that, it's really, really driving me mad. And that's kind of partly why everything you see here is from a, a trade or from a prize, you know, it's, it's basically from a YouTuber because eBay is just gone completely sad. And that has slowed me up on my um, my Mass System collection. It's actually really put me off, to be honest. When when most of the games are kind of from the UK, I just really don't want to pay that much shipping on it. It's really a pain in the hole. And it's not even that the shipping is necessarily that expensive. In some cases, it's just people lo are looking for a hell of a lot of money. So, ah, rant on shipping. Regular, that should be a regular feature for me because I'm constantly ranting on shipping. But anyway. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew Bayhug. Really, really appreciate that. Great stuff, and I will definitely, definitely have to think about opening those cards. They're calling to me even now, out of the corner of my eye. Mm. But anyway, I'll move on. One last item, and this is towards my Master System set. But as it was a trade with a, a fellow YouTuber, Evil Nod Six, I think is how you say that. I'll put a link again below. Uh, I'll put a link to all of these channels below. Um, in the description. Now, it was actually a game that I really, really wanted because it would finish off my NTSC exclusive set. But when he sent over his list of games, I didn't have great ones that I had to send over. So I actually sent over something from my collection because it was the only thing I had that I could send over. And I did kind of, I was really interested. So that really means that my required list doesn't change at all. It went down one, but I sent off a game, so it went back up one. So I still need the same amount of Master System games as I did before. And that has meant that 2 UK has passed me out. And I must be going slow as hell with this collection. Everyone's passing me out. Because at the beginning of the year, I was way, way, way ahead of him. I'm going to put it down to getting distracted by American games, card, vari card games, and variants. So anyway, enough jibber-jabber. What was the game? Dun, dun, dun. A classic, a classic on the system. It is ALF. So, here we go. It's in pretty nice condition. Um, complete as well. I mean, it, you know, it's not perfect, but it'll do me absolutely. I mean, that's, it, the manual's there. That's kind of what I'm looking for. And the character's got a little rough, but it's, it's really fine. That's a really nice box too. So, as I said, this was the last um, American game I needed for the collection. It's notorious for being terrible. I'm not 100% convinced it's as bad as people say, but we'll see, we'll see. Eventually I'm going to do a gameplay on this. It might not be this week, I don't know, but I'll get around to it now that I have it. Um, it but as I say, it's notorious. It's, it's considered like, you know, it's one of those kind of go-to games has been awful. Even despite being awful, I had to have it. And it was, it was one of my targets that I wanted the most, but it doesn't come up all that often over here. Understandably so it's an American exclusive um, and if you look at kind of the buy it now prices of course they're higher but buy it now prices they don't reflect the actual real price so it's so hard to tell what, um, what, it's what it really is worth so it was great to be able to just get it in a trade on, on YouTube um, that knocks the final um, I have some variants I want but that's the final US uh, Master System exclusive so just down to PAL stuff and then I can maybe look at Brazil and whatnot but I don't know, I'll take those as they come because I, there's other collections I think I want to get a bit more into as well. So once I kind of get the US and the um, PAL you know, region covered, it might be time to move on to another set. But we'll, we'll discuss, decide that at the time. Uh, or maybe beforehand, it depends how eager I get, I don't know. Anyway, that's the last bit then, because I'm really, really rambling today. I don't know what it is. So, recap. Focus RS. Um, the tail of Two Stewarts again, and really compatible there. Boop. Tetris, my Game Boy, can't go better than that. And of course, um, Alf, the greatest game ever made. So lots of good stuff uh, to keep me going, and some maybe not so good stuff. <laughs> and I know my wife really appreciated that Game Boy too. She was playing Dr. Mario and Tetris as well, really enjoying it. So yeah, good stuff. I've rambled enough, so we'll see you again soon. Hope you enjoyed watching, and um, yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff.